Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Vernham Dean in Hampshire. It's just in the northwest corner of the county. We've got Berkshire to the north and Wiltshire to the west. It's about nine miles northwest of Andover and we're inside the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty. And we're going to be walking a roughly five and a half mile circular route with a little detour. Uh, we'll be looking at the village and then we'll head south to an ancient pond and then back north to explore the church head west into Wiltshire to visit an Iron Age hill fort and I expect we'll see some stunning scenery along the way. Now I'm filming at the end of July. The sun is up there somewhere but there is a lot of cloud about. Fingers crossed we're going to be okay. Should be perfect conditions for a walk. Do come along with us. Well I've parked my car at the car park at the recreation ground which is to the east of the village. Okay well let's have a little wander through the village uh, by heading along the little road that goes through the centre a bit. Well, the first building we're going to look at is the village school and parts of it date to the 1860s but it was extended in 2002. It looks like it's a primary school these days. Oh what a delightful thatched farmhouse with some very impressive hollyhocks in the garden as well. And another quite stunning house here. Lilac Cottage, isn't that beautiful? Oh, another super thatched cottage. I love the front door there. They've got so much character to them, some of these houses, haven't they? And this is the Village Hall, or Millennium Hall, built in 1999. And it replaced an old hall that had been there since 1932. Well, as far as the village name is concerned, uh, back in 1219, it was known as Fernham, village among the ferns. Although I have seen another source say that Fernham also means land enclosed by bracken but it was called Vernum in 1550. The Dean part relates to a valley, but it wasn't actually mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It was part of the manor of Hurstbourne at the time. It became a separate manor in 1177 and split in two around about 1277 and didn't actually reform as one manor until 1575 when Winchester College became the principal landowners of the parish. But interesting, if you look at a map, you'll see that the church, vicarage and manor house are quite separate to the northeast. And there's a story that uh, the main part of the village was perhaps moved away from the church under the orders of the priest after a plague. Certainly, uh, there are no buildings uh, earlier than the 17th century in the main part of the village. And this is the only pub in the village, the George Inn and it dates back to the 17th century. Originally it was a thatched building and it has been rebuilt a number of times over the years and the thatch was replaced by tiles in the 1930s. I just noticed uh, opposite the pub there's this lovely old, looks like a drinking fountain that uh, looks like it might have been restored. Next to that, this little area here used to be the village pond. And I think now it's just a sort of flood overspill from the hill but I've seen some old pictures in the past when the pond was still here. Indeed some of the old uh, pictures show the two gorgeous cottages that are right by the pond. Just on the northern side of where the pond was again another Quite gorgeous thatched property. Again, more hollyhocks. <laughs> and this white house next to it, I'm pretty sure that used to be a pub called the Mason's Arms. Right, before we head out into the countryside, let's have a little wander down. This is called Back Lane. That's the old Methodist chapel with the date of 1869, which I guess is now residential. It really is a, 
such a picturesque little uh, little road with some of these houses I tell you I just need the sun to come out now and be perfect okay well we're going to start heading into the countryside heading southwards towards uh, Thornicombe Wood and there's some terrific views here already I don't know if you can see behind me up on that hill there's an Iron Age hill fort there and we'll be uh, exploring around that towards the end of the video and the crop in front of me, oilseed rape, the flower long gone and just the, the pods now drying out, won't be long before that's harvested. A little pit stop just before we head into Thornycombe Wood. So this is looking uh, back to the north. Look at those butterflies hovering above uh, the crop there. And the fields looking quite, uh, quite brown now actually. Just got to the top of a, a ridge, good excuse for a pit stop. So we've come out of uh, Thornycombe Woods and uh, in the middle of what looks like a, a crop of maize and some terrific views all around from, from up here. I'll slowly turn the camera around. We see over in the distance there. Right, let's kick on. I should say uh, Logan's feeling very pleased with himself at the moment. He uh, was at a, a dog show at the weekend, Southampton and District Canine Association, and he was second out of eight in the Any Variety Hound Veteran class. And then he went on to uh, help me win the Adult Handling class. So for a seven-year-old dog, there's life in him yet. Now we're just about to join a little lane, I think it's called Conholt Lane, and we'll be heading northeasterly. But just in front of me here, well, it's the site of what was an ancient pond. It shows up on a map as something like Knight's Mere. Um, well, there's not much to see today. I mean, obviously there are, there are reeds, so there's certainly the basis of a pond there. And apparently, Crusaders were reputed to have watered their horses here on their way to Crusades. Well, it looks like we've got a little bit of road work to do, but uh, it's very quiet and peaceful and there's some lovely views either side. It looks like there's an avenue of trees that we're going to go through. But I'm keeping my eyes peeled. I was reading a story of a ghost that frequents these parts. Back in uh, 1665, when there was a plague in the area, the local priest uh, suggested to all the villagers that it would be a good idea to go and uh, camp outside the village up a hill to keep out the way and he promised uh, to feed them and look after them but he reneged on his promise and uh, the villagers were uh, a lot of them either died from the plague or indeed from starvation although I did read that uh, the priest ended up uh, catching the plague and dying from it but uh, 
Anyway, we're, we're keeping a lookout for him. Wow, this little road, it's downhill and we haven't come across one car yet, so it hasn't been a problem, but it's gorgeous views as we go along. There's a crop of, uh, I think it's barley, I think, by the looks of it. That won't be long before that gets harvested. And now the sun has come out, it brings it out in all its glory. Well, a little update on the route. We've come down Conholt Lane, cross the road, that's the Upton to Vernon Dean Road, and now I'm going to follow a footpath over a meadow and through fields heading northwards towards the church. Another little pit stop just to show you where we've been. So that's the, the ridge that uh, we've just come down and then the little lane on the other side of that field. And then we've just crossed this beautiful meadow. Right. Well, somewhere behind those trees, in other words, we're not going to be able to see it, is uh, Vernon Dean Manor. As I said earlier, some distance away from the main part of the village. But uh, the house there, well, parts of it date to about 1600. Well, I think that's the vicarage over there, in which case the church must be very nearby. And there it is. Isn't that sweet? The St Mary the Virgin Church, it's uh, got Norman origins, uh, although there was a, a complete rebuild and restoration in 1851. And it consists of an aisleless nave, a chancel with a small north vestry, a western stone bell turret. You can see the walls are of flint rubble and it's got a stone dressing. The north wall of the nave is the only original bit left of the 12th century building, as well as the west doorway. Well, <laughs> if that isn't a typical example of a Norman arch, I don't know what is. It really is splendid. Well, let's have a little look inside. There's the uh, font on the left there. The pulpit on the left and looks like some sort of electric organ on the right. Magnificent stained glass window above the altar as well. Beautiful little church. And just looking back above the door there, a wooden gallery, and then right up above, a, well not a sort of rose window, if you know what I mean. Oh look, another one of those uh, drinking fountains, very similar to the one back in the village. They really are quite splendid, aren't they? Well, we've left the church, so we're now going to head, I suppose, northwestly down Church Lane. Oh, how about this? I think this is my favourite uh, thatched house that we've seen so far on the route. Now, this is an important footpath sign not to miss. Uh, we don't want to carry on along the road. Instead, we want to head right. And I think this track is called Church Lane. Well, another very peaceful section of the walk, going through a wooded area with the sun peeping through the foliage above, the old bird twittering away. Just seen a little mouse dart across in front of me. 
Logan missed that. He's too busy looking out for those pesky squirrels. Well, we're continuing to head westwards past Box Farm and oh, how about this for a view, just looking through the gate. Just ignore the uh, telegraph poles, but really is quite alluring. Right, we're now heading south down a little lane called Bowers Lane. A little bit more road work, but again, it seems to be very quiet. Another little update on the route. <laughs> We've been coming down Bowers Lane and uh, we've been looking out for this footpath sign, which is just in front of me here, Vernon Bank, I think we're at. So we just need to go a few yards sort of westwards and then continue heading south. Well, a mountain of bales of straw. And if I slowly pan round, we can see where it was a few days ago. <laughs> now I think our footpath crosses this field. Well, before we head back into Vernon Dean, um, which is over to the east of here, I'm going to do a little detour to the west to check out an Iron Age hill fort. Well, I'm now at a place called Goodsey's Gate. I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce that, but we're basically on the Hampshire-Wiltshire border. And this house in front of me, it's called Woodside Cottages, but it used to be a pub called the New Inn. It certainly shows on an old map. I don't have any details about it other than to say that there is a record of a, a new inn Woodside in the list of Old Hampshire pubs. Anyway, we need to uh, follow a footpath that goes alongside the house, uh, heading westwards towards the Iron Age Hill Fort. <laughs> well, folks, I think this is going to be a fair old detour because we've got to head up the side here and right up to the top of that ridge. But I think it'll be worth it when we get there. We're nearly at the top. Good excuse for another pit stop to look at the views. I mean, isn't that terrific? So, well, that's Vernon Dean down there. And then if I just slowly pan across the valley, I so say it's one of these. Uh, Ones where it's difficult to put the pictures into words. Wow, just look at this quite splendid beech tree that's clinging on to the top of one of the banks that goes round the fort. I don't know if you can make out, it's absolutely covered in carvings. Sort of people have put their initials and dates. I've never seen so many on a tree must be some sort of tradition, I don't know. Well, we've made it to the top of the fort and what a splendid one it is too. It's called Fosbury Camp. And it's about 26 acres in size and it sits on top of Knolls Down. There are steep slopes on the south, southwest and east and you've got Oak Hill Wood on the north side. And there's an inner rampart about three meters high with a ditch of about 
four metres deep, and then an outer rampart about two metres high. And the total width of the ramparts and ditch is about 40 metres. And inside the actual fort itself, there are loads of these circular pits, and they vary from about a metre to four metres in diameter. And there's a pond on the eastern side. And it's certainly uh, well preserved. You see you've got the outer bank ditch and then the inner bank. You can certainly make it out very easily all the way around the top here. Well, it was certainly worth the effort of all that climbing uphill just to enjoy the views from the top here. Now, interesting, down at the bottom, uh, there's uh, an old Roman road. And if you look at the map, it's slightly unusual because, well, as you know, Roman roads generally are straight. But this one, there's a little kink in it. It sort of goes around the side of the hill and the fort which you don't often see. Now as to why it's got that kink in it, I, I don't know. Um, YouTubers Paul and Rebecca Whitewick, um, they've done a video on it and they thought they found what looked like the start of a straight Roman road that goes over the fort, but they couldn't be absolutely sure. So it's a bit of a mystery. Well, there is a, a trig point to the west of here, but unfortunately it looks as though it's on private land, so we're going to have to give that a miss. But seeing as we're up here and we've got this hill fort to ourselves, all this open space, time for some Whippet Zoomies. Cue the music. I don't think we're going to get a dog dip today, but we've managed to remember to bring loads of fresh water with us. <laughs> I think he enjoyed those zoomies. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to the Fosbury Camp Iron Age Hill Fort. We're going to head back to Vernon Dean, and the good news is it's downhill all the way. Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now. We've come off the Iron Age Hill Fort past what was the new inn and the road that goes to the village is just uh, behind that hedge there. So we're following a path uh, through a field to get back to the village. Now, just a tiny little bit of housekeeping as we come back into the village. The footpath that I've been coming along comes to the road and there's about 400 yards of road back to the village, but there's no footpath and it is quite a busy road. So if you are anxious, you could go up um, uh, this lane here and I'll put the name of the lane up on screen and then take a footpath to the right. That brings you back into the village at Back Lane, but it's quite a bit of a detour. Well, folks, we're back at the centre of Vernon Dean at the George Inn. It's uh, five minutes to two on a Tuesday and the pub's closed. Some you win, some you lose. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. What a super walk today. Weather, it didn't turn out to be too bad in the end. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.
Thank you.